Welcome back to a special holiday episode of Community Battlecast Primetime. I'm your host, Doomtaker, filling in for Not Soul Girls. A little under the weather right now, but that's alright. She should be back in time for the first Battlecast Primetime of the new year, but that won't stop us from getting news to you guys, so let's get right into it. Well, we finally got the announcement we've all been waiting for. Generals 2 is going to be the next game in this Command & Conquer series, but we gotta wait till 2013 for it. But that's okay, because we're also getting Tiberium Alliance, a free-to-play online browser game sent in the Tiberium universe. That should keep us busy for a while. But first, let's go over some stuff for Generals 2, or what we know so far. It was unveiled at the 2011 Video Game Awards. You can check out the trailer on YouTube, or you can check it out along with the official press release for Generals 2 on the Command & Conquer website. IGN.com has also posted an interview with one of the lead developers, and another blog posted has been made out about Bioware and Victory Games joining forces to bring us one of the best CNC games we've had, at least since the original. Now let's talk about Tiberium Alliance. Tiberium Alliance is joining the play for free browser game family and will feature three factions. Of course, GDI and Nod will be returning to the Tiberium universe, but we're also getting the Forgotten, which have been featured in some mods, so now the Forgotten are actually being made an official third faction for the series. Sorry, Scrin fans, you just gonna have to play some mutants for a while. You can check out the official trailer and other information on the official Command & Conquer website. You can also find the trailer on YouTube as well. They've also posted up some screenshots of the game as well as some screenshots of the three factions emblems. And if you want in, you can apply to opt in for the beta test. You can also keep tabs on them on their Facebook and Twitter pages for Tiberium Alliance. You should go check it out. Now it's time for the mod spotlight. Renegade X has taken second place in Indie Database's Indie of the Year contest, making a grand total of seven awards for this now independent game. Good stuff, guys. And just before Christmas, we were given a little present. The official release date for the Black Dawn campaign has been released and has been dated January 28, 2012. You can head on over to the official Renegade X website for all the details about the launch of this highly anticipated indie game. Command & Conquer General Shockwave ranks sixth in Mod Database's Mod of the Year contest winning them their first award for this project. If you haven't checked out this mod yet, head on over to Mod Database and get this awesome mod for Zero Hour. If you want a little bit more realism in your general Zero Hour, you can check out the Visual Reality mod. All this does is it changes some of the vehicles to look more like their realistic life counterparts. It doesn't affect any of the balancing at all, giving you a more realistic combat option. You can head on over to Mod Database now and check it out for yourself. New playtest build of OpenRA, the open source re-implementation of Westwood's original Red Alert, has been released and is now available for download. The newest version adds your bases under attack notification, which is kind of important, fixes a few crashes, and improves the engine internals. You can visit the OpenRA site now to download the latest version for yourself. Middle East Crisis got a large update, a website overhaul, some new UN units, new audio clips, and more. You can head on over to isotx.com and check it out for yourself. Tiberium Secrets released some new concept art. You gotta check these out. These are some pretty cool looking stuff. You can head on over to their mod database page now check it out for yourself. Since the Tiberian Sun official mini patches, mainly for the modding community, I decided to put this under the mod spotlight. There has been a new update, and if you want to see the change list, you head on over to their mod database page and check it out for yourself. Third public beta test of Twisted Insurrection mod for Tiberian Sun Firestorm has been re-released due to various bugs in the original and the map editor. There's also new multiplayer maps, AI tweaks, updates to the campaign, challenge missions, and more. You can head on over to their website here and check it out for yourself. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Welcome to the Battlecast 5. That's right, 5. For this episode, we are bringing you 5 wonderful replays. And in commemoration of Generals 2 being announced, 3 of those replays will be from Generals. I'm of course Cybert, your host. Let's kick this pajama slam off right with some classic Generals gameplay. First game is on Tournament Desert and it is between Ace Ventura as the Red Chinese Tank General in the South versus Oracle as the Pink GLA Stealth General in the North. Ace opens up with Supply Truck Aggression running over some of Oracle's workers. Oracle sends a quad cannon attack to Ace's base, but Ace cleans it up quickly. Ace gets tired of Oracle's tunnel networks and builds an army to take them out. The Overlord tanks cave in the tunnels and move on towards Oracle's main base. Oracle uses Jarman Kell's sniping talents to kill one of the Overlord drivers. Then he uses the Rebel Ambush to take control of the tank. The tanks go down and both sides retreat. Ace makes a move towards Oracle's base, but once again Oracle's Jarman Kell Rebel Ambush combo manages to keep Ace at bay. Ace's Black Lotus derives a couple of Oracle's buildings and sells them off for some quick cash. Too bad Oracle didn't 
didn't see that one coming. Ace decides to do away with the attacks from the side, and he makes an advance right up the middle of the map. Not even Jarman Kel can save Oracle now, and Oracle leaves to fight another day. Are you ready for some more Tournament Desert? Well, good, because this next game is Excal vs. Ninjutsu on that exact map. Excal is our purple Southern Americans, and Ninjutsu are Cyan Northern Chinese. Ninjutsu heads down the east side of the map with a lot of tank busters and a few Gatling tanks. With only a fire base as defense, it doesn't look like Excal can hold it off. But Colonel Burton comes to save the day. Ninjutsu's attack in the east was only a diversion from his main attack at Excal's starting location. Humvees with missile defenders in them manage to fend off the attack. MiGs and Gatling tanks put more pressure on the east side. They aren't satisfied to just shoot buildings, though. And the Gatling tanks move off towards Excal's Humvee army. But Excal's army is too powerful, and Ninjutsu gets beaten back. Excal makes a big drive towards Ninjutsu's base. Excal's Humvees are tearing up Ninjutsu's base, and when all hope seems lost, a clutch carpet bombing from Ninjutsu wipes out Excal's army. Excal remacros up another army, but Ninjutsu's precision MiG strikes lessen the numbers considerably. The resources around the map run out, and a final push from Excal, even though he has only a few units, is enough to make Ninjutsu leave the game. Game 3 is a 2v2 mirror matchup. On the top side of the map, Fallen Empire, it is Anubis, the Pink Nuke General, and Nighten, the Cyan Toxin General. The southern team is Tite, who is Yellow, and also the Chinese Nuke General, and Hai, the Orange GLA Toxin General. Tite heads off towards Anubis' base with a small force, while in the middle, the GLA Generals have a small battle. Anubis cleans out his base, and Nighten manages to sneak a worker behind enemy lines and builds a tunnel network. Hai musters a sizable army and heads for the northern team's expansion. While Hai is at a position attacking the expansion, Nighten makes makes use of his hidden tunnel network to get his army into High's base quickly. He's not able to do much damage before High's superior army gets back and kills off Night End's forces. High is out for revenge and he launches a full-out attack on Night End. High doesn't feel like committing and he backs out. Anubis and Tite throw down nuclear silos, but a joint strike between Anubis and Night End is able to take down Tite's silo. Anubis's clock runs down to zero and he unleashes a nuclear strike on High's base. Constant attacks from both Anubis and Night End cause Tite to leave the game. Anubis and Night End muster up some forces and after some bombardment, High leaves the game as well. Game 4 is in Kane's Wrath, and Bonus is making a return as the green GDI in the top right, but this time he's facing Dackle, the pink GDI in the bottom left. The map is Tournament Decision. This is a mirror matchup, and both players have completely standard macro style openers. Both players go Power Plant, Barracks, Watchtower, Sell the Watchtower, Engineer, Sell the Barracks, Second Barracks, Second Engineer, Sell the Second Barracks, Refinery, War Factory, Pitbull, Extra Harvester, Extra Refinery. The timings of all of these are almost exactly identical, but enough about their builds, let's move on to the Action. Dackle packs his MCV to try and expand to the Eastern Tiberium field, but as soon as he does, Bonus's pit bulls roll up. They manage to take down the MCV, but suffer heavy losses themselves from Dackle's missile squads. Dackle launches a three-pronged attack, but Bonus's defense is too strong, and Dackle retreats. Fast forward, and both players have sizable armies. Bonus throws down a sonic emitter just before Dackle tries to attack. It pays off as Dackle's army falls. Dackle tries to rebuild his army, but Bonus has got juggernauts, and with the superior range, Bonus is able to take out Dackle's expansion. Dackle expands to the north, and masses in tree in his main. Bonus moves into Dackle's main with his army, and Dackle just can't hold on to his main. Meanwhile, Dackle has been performing orchestra strikes on Bonus, targeting refineries, harvesters, and production facilities. Both players have only got a few buildings left and almost no money. Bonus has a larger army and is closing in on Dackle's final base. Dackle still has a trick up his sleeve, though, and he uses harvesters to distract Bonus's army while his hammerheads with zone troopers clean up the rest. Bonus has nothing left and is forced out. Our fifth and final game is between Vork, the blue Soviets in the north, and Soviet Pover, who is also as expected, plain as the Soviets. However, he is green and in the south. The map is Battle Base Beta. Both players rush with an absurd amount of airs, and the result is this roaring montage. Both players expand and start building up forces in their main. Borg moves out to Soviet's expansion, but is beaten back. Borg launches another attack at Soviet's expansion. This time, he's able to do some damage and press on to the main. Soviet has an apocalypse tank, and with its power, he's able to hold off Borg. Borg tries to send a lone Kirov to save the day, but Soviet takes it down before it can do too much. Soviet and Borg meet in the middle, and after a quick battle, Soviet comes out ahead. Soviet pushes his advantage and takes out Borg's expansion. Soviet then knocks down Borg's front door, and surprise, surprise, Soviet isn't there to sing carols. With multiple Apocalypse tanks supporting Bullfrogs and Natasha tearing through his base. Bork doesn't get a chance to use his vacuum imploder to end the game with a bang. This one instead goes out with a fizzle. Now it's time for some community fan art. We got some awesome wallpapers for Generals 2. First one we have is by Muhammad Asif. The next one we have was made by Zekudor. The next two we have are from CC Hyper of the CNC official forums. Some pretty awesome stuff here, guys. Now we got you guys something special for the holidays. That's right, it's CNC holiday themed artwork. First 
first one we have is by Private Dan. Yuri, and he's got a present for you. I'm not sure if I want to share my thoughts, though. No, honestly, it's a good piece. Now, we've got a couple here that Nod Soldier Girl found that she couldn't really find an author for these pieces. So if these are your fan art, please let us know. We'll get you the credit you absolutely deserve. The first one we have is a candy cane. I wonder if these are mandatory passouts in the Brotherhood of Nod. Next, we have Kane wishing everybody a Merry cane miss. And, of course, we've got Tanya handing out some more candy canes for us all. And that wraps up another episode of Community Battlecast Primetime. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you have some news you'd like to feature, then drop us a line. You can reach Nod Soldier Girl herself at nodsoldiergirl at hotmail.com. We here at Community Battlecast Primetime all wish you a happy and safe holiday and new year. And we'll see you on the battlefield in 2012, generals. Thank you.